Hi guys, welcome to the latest badass guitar tips, which doesn't actually involve a guitar today. It's going to be a uh, spoken word today, alright? Um, I was motivated to record something because lately I'm getting asked a lot of the same kind of question, which is something along the lines of, oh wow man, I've seen your videos, uh, you can shred like anything, I want to be able to do all that, you know, I want to be able to do all those techniques, and how long is it going to take, what exercises do I need to do, and stuff like that. It's a very common question to be asked, um, but I've been seeing a lot of it lately. And um, I'll be honest, it's a very frustrating subject. It's frustrating to see the questions being asked, and it's frustrating to try and answer them. And, um, and I'll address those two issues now. Uh, why is it frustrating to see it? Um, it's because I understand it, yeah? I understand it. If I was like a young 15-year-old, 14-year-old guitar player who's been playing for like a year or two years, you're bombarded with YouTube videos of amazing players, um, not just their favourite guitar players, but other people on YouTube who can play amazingly, all this stuff, right? So I, I get it, you know, if I was like a teenager growing up now trying to learn how to play guitar, I'd be the same, you know, I'd be like so bombarded with stuff, I wouldn't know where to start. And it's like, I want to be able to do it now, you know? So I understand where they're coming from, but it's so frustrating because it's so hard to reiterate to that person that actually you don't really want to need to focus on that stuff right now. What you want to focus on is musicality. You want to be able to play rhythm. You know, can you even play in time? Can you even palm mute? Do you even know how to play chords, bar chords, you know, riffs? Can you play along to a song? Can you even figure out that song by ear? You know, forget tapping, sweeping, and stuff like that, you know, you can't even play in time yet, you know, in some cases. And I'm not saying they're like this, you know, two years of guitar playing, they might have some of the foundations pretty much sorted, but two years is not a long time, you know, and I think in some cases it's just too much to expect yourself to start looking at all this neoclassical shit that's out there and want to be able to do that. I understand why they want to do that, but it's very hard to sort of then turn to that person and say, you probably putting too much on your plate right now. You need to actually get more uh, musical foundations behind. You know, you need to be able to bend strings properly uh, to at least have a bit of decent vibrato going on. I know these are things which you still continue to develop through the years. You don't have to become Dave Gilmore before you can learn how to alternate pick. I understand that. But at least you need to have a solid base to work from. You know, you can't play for a year or two years and then just start looking at, you know, Ingve and Paul Gilbert and like thinking, right, I'm going to do all that right now. It's just, you're going to miss out on a lot of musicality because what people forget is all the famous guitar players from the 80s, although we know that they really reached levels of technical excellence that were perhaps we didn't see in the 70s and stuff like that, or we did, but it was mostly the fusion guys, what we forget is that the guys from the 80s had very musical influences. They were influenced by, you know, Clapton, Hendrix, and, you know, Jeff Beck, you know, all those players, you know, who are really musical and knew how to write songs. They knew how to bend strings. Um, and it wasn't just about technique, technique, technique. Whereas now, all of us guys who are influenced by the technical excellence of the 80s and ever since then, um, we're just focusing on the technical aspects of what they could do. We're, we're perhaps not focusing on the musical aspects and we're forgetting that before you get to the, the, the Malmsteen level or, or whatever, Buckethead, uh, Avenged Sevenfold, Dude, Sinister Gates, you know, because it's all changed now. You know, there was a time where it was all about Malmsteen, then it was all about like Paul Gilbert, and then it was all about, you know, Betancourt, you know, and now the current generation, it's all about Sinister Gates and Buckethead and uh, people like that, you know. There's always a new kind of guitar hero coming in each generation. Um, but what people are forgetting that before you get to that level, really, you want to have a decent dose of musicality. And it's boring. They don't want to hear that. And I understand why they don't want to hear that. I'm not blaming them. Um, but we have to kind of work to transcend this annoying kind of digital age of I want it now, instant gratification. We somehow need to get beyond that and convince people that 
the people, the, the great guitar players that have longevity and have stayed within people's minds and have achieved, you know, greatness, have done so because they've had something really special to offer. It's not so special to be able to sweet pick it a million miles an hour because everyone can do it now. You know, there are kids on YouTube that can do it. It's not so special. It's not saying that it's not an achievement because of course it is, but you're really less likely to stand out just because you can do that. You're just going to be like everybody else. So ask yourself, is that something you really want to be able to do? It, yeah, it's great, but you know, how about learning how to write a solo? You know, how about focusing on your tone? When I was listening to people like Satriani and Malmsteen growing up, obviously I was overawed by all the technical stuff they were doing. But the thing that drove me most of all was I wanted to sound as good as those guys. I didn't understand why I didn't sound as good. I, I, I wasn't thinking about I want to be as fast as those guys. I was thinking, why don't I sound as good, right? And when you focus on sound above all else, you start to take on board the things like, oh, right, it's because I'm not bending in tune. My bends sound crap. Or, ah, oh, the reason I'm playing that note and it doesn't sound like that note on there is because I'm not giving it some wobbly vibrato. I'm not making it really sing. Or I'm not getting palm muting right. Or I'm not muting out all those unwanted string noises. You know, when you start to focus about the actual quality of what you're producing, um, your guitar playing sort of takes on a different level, really. You start to actually... Um, oh, what's the word? Oh, I can't think of the word now. Uh, but you kind of you take what you've got, and instead of just trying to add more to it, you're actually um, oh fuck, I can't think of the word. Bas uh, basically, refine what you can do, so that all the horrible noises start to vanish. So actually, what you're playing becomes a lot clearer. Um, there's more clarity in your playing. Your notes start sounding a bit. Your tone just sounds a bit more solid, a bit beefier, and stuff like that. So there's, there's so much to consider before you even start thinking, oh, you know, sweep tapping and string skipping and all that rubbish. You will get there, but just don't try and get there too early, you know? I've really rabbited on quite a lot. Um, there was something else I wanted to talk about, which was magic exercises. What exercises can I use? It doesn't matter, just... Really, you know, if you want to learn alternate picking, just do a quick search on Google. You'll find an exercise. Everybody in their dog tabs out exercises. It doesn't matter which one you pick, it will still work on the technique. Um, personally, I found that exercises don't capture my interest, so I never made as much progress when I focused on exercises because it might go well for a few days, but then you get the day where you don't make any progress and, you, and then you're bored and you're not really motivated to pick up your guitar the next day and then eventually you just leave that exercise and you forget about it and then you look for the next exercise. You blame the exercise, right? It must be the exercise's fault. Um, I kind of recommend to always keep a musical edge in what you're doing. So you're probably going to benefit more if you actually pick a section of a solo to learn. Um, when you have a musical element to something that you're practicing, you actually, I find that it keeps your inspiration and your motivation higher to return to that and progress the next day. It's like you're taking like a little mini symphony and you're seeing how it progresses over the course of several weeks and so on and so on. And uh, if you have something musical, you can focus on refining the sound of that. Instead of just focusing on one particular movement or mechanic with an exercise, it's very isolated and, it, and it's very boring. Some people are able to do it and it works well for them. Um, but if that's not working for you, you might want to try just keeping it musical. Pick a section of a solo, like I said or pick some sort of musical etude, which is interesting to listen to and works a variety of different techniques. So I would recommend you to do that. Start learning stuff by ear as well. Really, I cannot stress that enough. You need to keep interest in what you're doing. There needs to be that musical element. Otherwise, what you're doing becomes isolated from the end result. Like we're guitar players, so what we're eventually going to be doing is playing, not practicing, but playing. We're going to be putting all of our efforts into something that should have a musical result at the end of it. But if you spend all of your time being removed from that end result and all you're doing is putting time in with exercises which are isolated from any chords or any backing tracks or any music at all, what you're doing become, uh, becomes kind of um, pointless or you start to lose sight of why you're doing it and it just becomes a a case of trying to beat yourself, to force yourself to pick up the guitar day after day, day after day, and 
trying to increase the BPM on the metronome by like two or three BPM each day and it's just... I don't know how people do that. I couldn't do it like that. I would get really demotivated, okay? So you have to keep a musical element in what you're doing. Wow, I've really banged on for like over 10 minutes. It's, have you had enough yet? <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't want to come across as being harsh in this video. I'm not meaning that at all. I'm just trying to sort of say to people that want to ask me those kind of questions that there are no magic exercises. I promise you there are no magic exercises, right? There are no shortcuts, nothing like that. Beware of anybody who promises you stuff like, I will make you a guitar god with my magic course and I will make you irresistible to the opposite sex and you will be a guitar god. I will give you the magic secrets that you need. All that NLP crap. You know, that you see a lot of these guys selling. Don't fall for it, it's crap. There are no shortcuts. Just enjoy what you're doing. Keep it musical. If you have favorite bands, learn their songs. You don't have to learn all of the songs all the way through. Just learn the parts you can manage. If you have favorite solos, learn parts of the solos. Even if there's a bit in the solo which you can't quite play up to speed, just try and replicate it as best as you can. That's exactly what I did. I took what I could do and used it to try and decipher things that I wanted to hear. I'd learn parts of songs. Some songs I'd learn all the way through, some songs I would just learn a bit of it. And with the solos, I would try and get it as close as I could. It might not have been on the right string, I might not have played one of the techniques the same, and I might have missed out certain notes if it came to a fast bit. But by doing your best and trying to approximate it the best that you can, you're training your ear, you're giving yourself um, better timing, you start to develop taste, things like that. Just do it, that is all I can say. Stop looking for exercises. They won't save you all that work. Um, regards how long, like I've been playing guitar since I was 10 years old, I'm 29, so 19 years, give or take. So not all of that would have been constant progress. I might have, you know, tr treaded water, at certain points during that and didn't really make much progress and then you have bursts of progress and that's how it goes for everyone. Nobody makes constant progress like that and you know so don't think wow I have to play for 19 years before I can play all that stuff on 30 shredders that's not necessarily the case. It's a lifetime journey you're always going to be discovering things so don't set yourself too much well don't give yourself too much pressure at this stage to be able to do every single technique known to man and be a guitar god um, it's not like that. Just enjoy what you're doing and another thing I would like to point out is a lot of people want to learn stuff because they think they should be able to do it or because everybody else is doing it therefore I should be able to play that technique right. Um, do stuff because you want to do it, okay? If you always keep your practice routed in rooted, yeah rooted, routed is something else, that's an American term or router, wood router. Shut up, Ben. Anyway, if you keep your practice rooted in uh, your desires musically, like you want to learn pop punk, stick to learning pop punk songs, don't learn jazz theory, you know, because that's just why. Do what you need, uh, learn what you need for you. Keep it musical, always keep the enjoyment factor, all right, so don't get bogged down with exercises. Exercises will just bore the shit out of you and it'll make you a robot. There are so many drones out there, robots that are just acres of acres of sweeping followed by tapping and it just says nothing. It's not impressive at all. I know I've done a lot of those techniques in my videos but that's because I'm trying to emulate someone who was known for those techniques but when I'm not doing those videos um, I have no interest in trying to make something sound like technical exercises. I'll be honest with you, that stuff is quite boring, okay? so. It's really not something to aspire to. If you want to learn a technique, learn it because you're going to use it musically, all right? Ask yourself, am I actually going to use this? If you're learning like eight finger tapping, ask yourself, am I actually really going to use this anywhere at all? And um, if the answer is no, spend your time on something that is going to benefit you as a guitar player. So yeah, this was a bit rambly, but hopefully I've given you guys some ideas and I want to help clear up that kind of whole, I want to be a guitar god, tell me what exercises you used kind of questions because they're kind of, they're just not really, 
they're like the kind of what's best, you know, coffee or tea kind of questions. What's best, karate or kung fu? You know, they're just endless questions which will never have a right answer. So just learn what you want to learn, okay? That's as simple as that. It really is. Uh, yeah, that's about 16 minutes. I really do need to shut up. So next time we'll get back to some guitar playing. I just had to get this off my chest because like I, I'm just seeing too much of this, this kind of stuff and I want to kind of help people with this. Um, and it's very hard to put it into a email. And also you're saying stuff that people don't really want to hear. So they can watch this video back again and again and again. And hopefully some of what I said will sink in. Okay, so it's a long journey. All right, forget exercises, keep it musical. Yeah, that's enough. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.